Today I'm going to be changing the valve cover gaskets on this 2003 Ford Explorer with a 4.0 liter single overhead cam engine. Valve covers are on each side over here. Because I have all this air intake stuff over them, I'm going to have to remove all that. So that means we'll have to unplug things like the, the uh, mass airflow sensor and taking vacuum lines off. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the negative battery cable. That way we don't short out any electronics on the car while we're removing the plugs. Just make sure to pull the terminal over to the side so it doesn't touch and spark on you. All right, I'm gonna start off by taking off this little plastic cover for the throttle body. It has a couple T25 torque head screws in it. So you'll need some torque bits like this. Got one up here. One down here next to the oil filler. Now I'm going to work on getting this air box and the air tube off. I'll go ahead and unhook the wiring harness for the mass airflow sensor. Just pushing that tab and it'll come on out. You got to remove any vacuum lines off of it or any uh, PVC lines. One right there. You want to check around it. It's got a clip up here that's holding in a wiring harness. I'm gonna remove them wires out of that harness. Take a flathead screwdriver and loosen this hose clamp. Now I'm gonna undo two clips down here, like you're gonna change the uh, air filter. Take the air box loose. Look around, make sure there's nothing else hooked up to it. And now you want to get this loose from the throttle body and just set it out of the way for now. What I'm going to do also, I'm just going to remove the air filter so I'm not dropping any dirt or nothing on the clean side of the air filter. And while I got it off, I'm going to clean it out and clean that air box out. Now looking at it, you got your throttle body right here, which is partially over this valve cover. This connected to this upper intake part that goes all the way over the other valve cover. So we need to get all this off to be able to get access to the valve covers. Now we got to start taking things loose from the throttle body. First thing we got to take these two uh, throttle cables off. This one on the outside goes to the, the uh, cruise control. One thing you got to do is take that one loose from the throttle body, just slide it to your left, and it clips right off. Then we need to get this, this cable out of our way. It's held in in this bracket. It's got a couple little ears on it. I'm just going to squeeze them ears in, push it through, pull the cable straight out. It's got a couple places where it's connected to the top of the intake. Just pop the cable out of them. Just pull it around. And we're just going to set it over to the side. With the throttle cable, it runs in this groove right here. It has an end on it that holds it in the end right here. I'm going to take my pliers, squeeze some ears in. Once you got it slid through the other side, pull it back and pull the cable up through that little slot in the bracket. Release it and just come pull your cable down right here and it'll just slide out of the end of this plate right here. It has this end soldered onto it. And all it does is just slide in there like that. So slide it out. Then we want to set this one off to the side. It's got a couple clips. It's got a clip right here. And a clip right here. We 
We're just gonna set that off to the side. On the throttle body, you got your throttle position sensor. You have the pigtail that plugs into it. It's got a little ear up here you squeeze in, it just pulls out. Right here's your idle air control valve. It's got a plug on it, it's just got a little tab. You press in, pull it out. These wires are held onto the top of the throttle body right here on this bolt head. You may have to take a screwdriver or something. You just want to pry that up off there gently. And we just set that off to the side as best as we can. There's a vacuum line right here. We need to unplug. That out of the way, set that to the side, set this one to the side. It's got a vacuum line on top of the EGR valve. We want to take that off also. Some of these vacuum lines can be kind of tough to get on, the rubber gets hard, but you want to be careful not to break any of them and start a vacuum leak once you get done. There's that one. Right here behind the throttle body, this is vacuum line right here. It runs to the fuel pressure regulator. And it has this crimp on here from the factory. What I'm gonna do is just cut that off to remove this hose. Then I'll replace that with a regular style hose clamp. Sometimes these vacuum lines can be a little hard to get off so that rubber gets heated on there good. See, that was a factory clamp on there, and I'm just going to replace that. Throw the scrap metal. Just set that hose out to the side. The EGR valve is back here behind the throttle body, connected to the upper end tape. There's a couple ways you could go about it. You could remove the two bolts that holds the EGR valve onto the intake, or you can just remove the exhaust pipe from it. I'm gonna take the exhaust pipe off of it. That way the EGR valve and all is still on the intake. and just remove it all off as a whole. To get that pipe off, you need an inch and 1 16th wrench trick with this with it being a tight spot every time you move it you can take the wrench off flip the wrench around it gets you at a different angle and you get a bite on it Over here on the other side, you got a couple vacuum hoses connected to the intake. Right in here, you need to remove them. Also, back here, it's kind of hard to see. There's a little wiring harness that just clips onto the intake. You just want to pop that out, too. Move that over to the side. Pull this vacuum line off. I'm going to disconnect this one so we can get it out of our way. All right, I got them vacuum lines off. And I got that wiring harness unclipped from back there. If you come over here in the middle of everything, there's a wiring harness clip right there on the intake that we need to take off. Okay. 
and take a good look around make sure there's nothing else connected then we're going to work on start taking the, the screws out of the upper intake you got these torque head bits there there and on the back side of it they're way down in there there's one and there's one on this back side that I can't get a camera to you basically just gotta go by feel from there and it's like that on the other side too there's one there come over there's another one down there and then the back side too the intake bolts or T30 torque bits have some swivel extensions universal joints and extra extensions and all are going to come in very handy to get into all these here it comes out they sit in these boots Having an extension magnet can come in handy of retrieving them too. I missed one thing back here in the back of the intake. It's got this valve mounted to it. It's got these vacuum lines and this wiring harness connected to it. I just need to take them loose to be able to get it off. All right, now the intake's off. This is the bottom side of it. If you like to, replace them, uh, the intake gaskets right here. They're made out of silicone. A lot of times you can reuse them, but while you got it off, might just be a good idea to go ahead and change them. Clean the surface up real good. Here on top of the engine, you're going to want to clean this area up good before you put the upper intake back on. What I'm going to do is stuff some paper towels or some rags into these ports to keep from anything falling down into the engine while I'm working on it. All right, now that we got the intake off, if you look around on the valve covers, on a lot of the bolts, it's going to have wire looms connected to them right here. We have to pull, get all them off, all the way around it. Sometimes they can be a booger to get off. Let's try this one. There, that one came off pretty easy. You gonna need some, some um, long um, deep weld sockets to get these off. Some, it's got all kind of different sizes and different types around it. Also, on this pasture side, it's got this fuel rail right here, and it's bolted onto the top of the valve cover here. Got to remove that. On this driver's side at the front, you got this little sensor that plugs up on top of the valve cover to remove the wiring pigtail. It's got this little metal bar right here. It's just a little clip. Remove that, and it'll slide right off. Now it's just a matter of getting all the fasteners off the valve cover. Seems like they're a 5 sixteenths. You're gonna need a deep weld socket. And I don't have 3 8 inch drive deep weld sockets this small, so I'm using quarter inch. And that'll work good because these fasteners are real small and when you go to tighten them up it'll be better to tighten them up with a quarter inch drive uh, ratchet that way you don't risk over tightening them and stripping the threads
tried to keep track of which ones just have a regular bolt head on it and which ones have this shaft on top of it on different the different sides they're in different places if you need to take a picture of them before you start taking them out to keep track of them I just came across something the EGR tube it runs down to the exhaust manifold it's right there it also has two lines that goes to this uh, control module to control the EGR valve it's all in the way of getting the valve cover off so I have to remove that pipe off the exhaust manifold and that all that will come off and then it will be out of our way alright now it's off they can be kind of hard to get off especially on that exhaust manifold side so be careful not to break anything when putting this back on I highly suggest putting some anises on the threads that way it keeps it from seizing up if you ever have to take it off again So here's the valve cover off the car. The gasket's just a little uh, silicone gasket that fits in this groove. Get you a little pick or something. And pull it out. Start getting it loose. You can see how brittle it is. It's just breaking as I'm pulling it out. That's why they start leaking. That gasket should be real flexible and if you feel it it's real stiff and as I bend and it's cracking in places it's just coming out in pieces after you get the old gasket out you want to take some brake clean and start cleaning it up real good wiping it down make sure there's no trash in that groove and I just like cleaning both the inside and the outside of the valve cover now that you got the valve cover cleaned up good you want to match up the gasket to the valve cover it's got two different sides on it one size has these these knurls on them that's the end that you're going to put inside the groove on the valve cover that helps hold it in place so you just want to kind of get it laid out in the order which way it goes just like that start from one corner and just start working it in the gasket kit will come with these grommets these grommets go on the bolts just make sure to replace these pull them off get you one and put it back on there see when they're new they're the same on both sides. All you gotta do is just slide it on there. And when you tighten it down, that'll create a seal in that hole to keep it from leaking. On your bolt, before you put the, the grommet on it, just take you a rag and clean any crud off of it. That way you get a good seal. I just go ahead and stick the, the bolts back in the valve cover push down on them and it seats that grommet. Put that grommet in there, it'll hold them in place. Just have them in there. That'll make it a little bit easier than trying to fish for them. Before you put the valve cover back on it, you wanna go around this mating surface, around here, all the way around, and clean it. What I do, I just put a little bit of brake clean on my rag and wipe it down real good. You don't wanna get no crud down into the head though, you wanna be careful. Then carefully put your valve cover back in place. Once you got it in place, you wanna get the bolt started all the way around. Just do it by fingers, you know, just to run them down, but don't tighten them up yet. Just go around and just run them down I 
I'm going to be using a quarter inch drive ratchet to tighten them down. That way I don't put too much torque on them and strip them out. What you want to do is kind of work back and forth, starting from the middle, then out. Of tighten them down, doing just a little at a time. That way everything bolts down smoothly. Now it's just repeating the same process for the other side. Now it's just a matter of putting everything back together in reverse order. I'm going to, first off, before you put the intake back on, though, you want to clean that, that mating surface. And I'm going to go ahead and replace the, the intake gaskets. The intake gaskets, just six individual rings come in a kit. You just basically do it the same way you did the valve cover gaskets. The intake bolts are in these boots. So I'm going to go ahead and snap them into place before I put it on the engine because the very back ones are real hard to get to. Before you put your throttle body cover on, just look over everything. Make sure you got all the vacuum lines and the wiring harnesses connected. Once you got everything back together, connect your battery back up, crank it up and see how it runs. Check it for any leaks and take it for a test drive. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.